Well, hello everyone, and welcome to uh, today's um, really hot topic. It's it's um, you know, is golf a mental game or is it a physical game or is it both? Well, I'm sure it's a, I'm sure it's a bit of both, but what sort of percentage? I know uh, Jack Nicholas was quoting uh, golf's you know 80, 80 to ninety percent of the game. Um, um, anyway, welcome, Pete. What, what do you what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I think you've got to have all, all cylinders going. It's no good just uh, relying on the uh, or the mental. Uh, it's a case of using all to their maximum. Uh, so uh, I think it all starts with having the right attitude. You know, they say attitude builds altitude. So as a uh, a, a golfer, if you have the uh, viewpoint that you're always you always got your white belt on, so you're, you're always continually learning and that you're always enjoying the learning experience, then I think you're going to have a lot more fun playing this game than if you have high expectations and uh, and, and and live and die on each golf shot. So it gets a little bit serious. Uh, so, so golf, a big deal here is it's uh, not a big deal. It, 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 if you want to play well, it's a journey, and uh, it's a combination of mental and mental. All right, super. So let's let's have a look at um, just a couple of uh, points. So first of all, let's look at what are the mental components that a golfer needs to have right. So um, first thing to realize is, is when you're playing well, you never have a mental problem. Okay. So, so when you're playing really good golf and they call it as like in the zone, um, you really, really don't have a mental problem. You just, you just see the shot you want to hit, hit it. And it just, just goes to where you want. That's the ideal scenario. And if we have a look at some mental components here, so I've got a formula, which is concentration equals focus minus distraction or distractions. So your ability to concentrate, because most people don't really know what concentration is, but your ability to concentrate equals how good your focus is um, compared to what distractions are getting in the way. Um, so what we're going to look at is what are some examples of getting into focus, Peter? And what are some examples of distractions when you're playing golf? Okay, well, number one, uh Point of focus is the golf ball and uh, the ball's target. Uh, they always say, uh, "What's the ball?" So when you're watching the ball, if you're looking at it in a, not a not a, a not too intense focus, but just nice soft focus that there's the ball and your attention's on it. That's one one part of your focus. Uh, another part of your focus is in, before you hit the ball, you need to focus. Go. So there's a whole a dress routine that will allow you to balance out the important elements that you need to focus on, like uh, how the wire of the ball is, uh, where your target is, how far, what wind direction, uh, basically getting set up the right distance from the ball, which requires a, a, a a routine, you do the same routine every time. You can relax off of that, but at least get to the right fit the ball and get yourself aim where you want to go. You can focus on hitting the ball. So, so focusing on the ball, focusing and having a focus of knowing where the target is, focusing on the rest of the um yeah just check your headset i think it's gone over to um the computer and the microphone um all right so um yeah so it's it's the really important parts is to to be mentally ready um, and just to be aware of, um, and, and it's a good idea to, to actually grab a sheet of paper, just draw a line down the middle and put what helps you get into focus. 
and on the on the left side and on the right side just just write what distractions might um, get in the way of creating a good shot uh, when you're out in the golf course um, because um, you know some people have quite a lot of distractions so let's say you're standing over a golf shot and you're and you've got water down the right and you've suddenly had this, uh, you know, you've got, got this swing thought in the back of your head to try and counteract the water on the right. Um, you know, that would be a, a couple of uh, distractions if if the swing thought is, is not such a good one. Um, Pete? Yeah, look, I've, I've got my headset back in, in, in focus, basically. Uh, it's, it's tuned into. So now we're ready to uh, move into yeah, your distractions. You, you don't want us to be worrying about the hazard or getting over a... Uh, a water hazard in front of you, or uh, a big bunker on in the bunkers. The way golf course architects build golf courses, they they fill it full of distractions to to take your attention away from hitting the ball to where you really want it to go. And so, uh, as part of the address routine, uh, you can put into a system where you put your attention on where you want to go rather than where you don't want to go. And that, that can, can allow you to free your mind up to just be there comfortably uh, with a freewheeling swing and hit the golf ball and go to your target. And just be aware that the mind is a very powerful thing. So if you say don't go in the water or go in the water to the brain, it's probably thinking the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So as there's no no button. Yeah, there's no no. Uh, it's just uh, this is what you've got to do, um, and just focus on that. All right, let's look at the uh, look at the next component, Pete, um, which is the physical component, and we're going to look at what are the physical abilities or skills that a golfer must have. Um, we want basically good skills in um, putting, uh, chipping, pitching, and bunkers. So there's like four short game skills. And we're looking at um, good skills in fairway shots off the fairway and teeing off or driving. And um, also special and recovery shots. Just if you do get into trouble or you've got to create a certain shot, you know, how do you do those shots as well? Um, yeah, it was, it was fantastic to watch uh, Cameron Smith in the live, in the live, live. It was live, live. Uh, the live uh, tournament just recently, he actually, he overpowered Dustin Johnson, not off the tee, but with his mental strength of being able to play recovery shots uh, and putting. So uh, that ability to focus and be able to have a good physical ability to, to play those shots, uh, it, it is very important if you want to be successful in, in your golf game. Yeah, I mean, Cameron Smith, you know, if there was someone that was really mentally strong, uh, he, he is really good. And also where he's really good is the short shots. Um, as we've harped on for many, many years, um, you know, the short game is the scoring side. And if you can really score well, have a good short game, you can blow your opponents away as well. <laughs> yes. Um, I think it's... Uh, that, that... That ability has come, uh, Cameron Smith grew up on a golf course, one team, a golf club, uh, just uh, uh, north of uh, Brisbane uh, Central. And the golf course was not what you'd call a super conditioned golf course. So you get a lot of ordinary, poor lies around the green and uh, on, the, on the fairway. So he, he grew up learning how to play out of those bad lies. Uh, I'm up here in Townsville at the moment. And the, the, when I grew up here, uh, and Kari Webb, uh, she was out here yesterday having a practice. She's back in town. Uh, she grew up at Air Golf Club. Well, while they're nice golf courses, they're not they're not perfectly groomed uh, like some of the tour courses. So, uh, the, that, uh, Kari, I know, learnt to play a, a, a lot of recovery shots the same as Cameron Smith has. And basically, you, if you you got to practice them, but. Uh, so mentally, you get mentally good at it and good at focus when you, well, if you've done a little bit more physical practice. So that's part of the physical game, isn't it, Chris? Absolutely. And if we look at the um, next couple of points here, um, we're going to have a body that's in reasonable shape. 
um, if, if, if you're injured or your body can't move properly, obviously that's a, a big dis distraction. Is, um, you know, you can't um, have the ability that you, you probably could possibly have. Um, also, you know, the physical abilities we need is a consistent club face angle and path as the um, club approaches the ball. And you've got to have the ability to demonstrate and be competent in the above skills, which leads to confidence. Isn't that right, Pete? Correct. Uh, there's the physical part of the game. There are fundamentals that, uh, that if you apply the, an orthodox fundamental, like a good grip and a good stance, and you understand how to turn properly, there's a physical ability here. Now, if you've got, a, if you've got bad knees or you've got a bad back, uh, if you're restricted in those areas, then you've got to compensate. But for most, most golfers or most people, hopefully their, their body's in reasonably good shape. Uh, and if you swing correctly, there's less stress on the joints. For instance, there's a lot, a lot less stress if I turn in balance like this than if I do something like this. Now, quite often you see golfers, the knee buckles in that way and the shoulder goes down. That puts a lot of strain on the, on the physical part of the body, which leads to mental stress as well because you don't play too good of shots from there normally. So if you have good physical technique in golf, one, you'll, you'll protect your body, but also the, the golf swing is around a good technique is designed to hit the ball pretty straight. Uh, so you've got more control over where you get where the ball goes, which also very much help, uh, in, uh, helps a lot the mental game, doesn't it? Get back to Chris. Yeah, well, like as you said before, if you, if, as you said before, Pete, if you if you physically can hit um, a good shot. Um, then you can um, you ha you don't have a mental issue, okay? So um, yeah, so if you if you put in the practice and the training, you have this confidence. Let's just look at the next little part here, and we're going to have a look at just why golf is more um, a physical game than what you might think. And this is exactly what we we're just just discussing. Um, skill competence leads to confidence, which leads to strength uh, mentally. Um, if you look, if you have done the preparation and training, your deserve level goes up, which then makes you mentally stronger as you believe you can do it. So a couple of important points that, um, you know, basically <laughs> someone that's done the training, they think they deserve uh, to play well. Correct. At the same time, you don't want to, uh, expectation can get in the road of being in the now too. So, uh, but it's definitely, if, if I practice uh, in a correct way, so if I want to learn to play short shots, I've got to practice them. So basically we have a program in, in our system called the laws of accuracy. So rather than learn to hit the driver a long way first, if you learn to hit the ball with good technique over a short distance, I'm just going over over that line there. Now, once I can do that with a good technique, then a little bit more, a little bit more, you can gradually work your way up to hitting the ball with the full driver. Uh, and you'll get your confidence because you're building your competence in baby steps. Uh, I think a lot of people, a, a lot of golfers I see, they lack confidence because they haven't got the competence in playing the, the various shots. Uh, now, whether it's the short game or the long game, uh, there's nothing that, that uh, bypasses a good training on good technique. I think that's, it, if, if you train the right way, you'll have less strain on your body and you, you'll have much more enjoyment when you practice and when you play. And uh, that's when uh, golf, you know, it, it, it's a fun game to play when you when you've got a, a, a better tech, technical ability physically to do it. Uh, and then the mental attitude comes in behind that. I think 
if you play a whole lot of bad shots and you just keep slicing the ball and duffing it, it it's you, no mental strength is going to overcome that. The Dalai Lama said, I think in an interview, that he said, while his mental capacities are very good at focusing and and putting it on good attention, he said, because he doesn't know the, the mechanics of the golf swing, he wouldn't be much of a golfer. So, you know, one without the other is uh, is, is not going to make you have much fun playing this game for a long time. And this game is a game of a lifetime. So it's worth uh, doing, you know, putting in the, doing the right things uh, and having the right attitude along the way. I think that's a big deal. And and um, as well as having the right concepts, you know, so oh, yeah, yeah. so when you start an act, when you start or continue an activity, you know, it doesn't matter what sport or activity you're doing, your your concept of how it works is is really key. Um, if you've got a, a, a good concept on how something works, um, you, you can create good physical things as well. So that's exactly. part of the mental side as well. Yeah, just to share this, uh, you know, to, to hit the ball up in the air, a lot of golfers think that they've either got to hit level, the club coming in level to the ground or slightly on the upswing. Uh, uh, not just beginners, but I, I've come across a lot of golfers playing for a long time that you ask them, how do you get the ball up in the air, especially with the short shots, and they, they're trying to lift it. So it's quite interesting to note that to get the ball up in the air, there's a little mark here called, on about the equator. I want to hit the ball just below that mark with the club head descending. But also, it's very valuable to have the club leaning this way as you hit the ball rather than this way. You can see this way, you can either scoop it or top it. Whereas if you come this way, the ball winds into the club face you get better compression and you get better backspin and so to get the ball up in the air that concept of hitting down on it and to hit with the mechanics the technique where the sharp forward leans as you hit the ball uh, this is uh i'll just do it with a small shot but this concept of to get the ball to go up i've got to hit down and i've got to have the shaft leaning forward not scooping up this way. So um, that concept is a, is, a, is a fundamental, but there are quite a few others that are very important as well. Uh, yeah, and, and if, you, if you do look at forward shaft lean, the best players in the world compared to the starting position have between uh, 12 and, and 16 degrees of forward lean at impact. Just want to show us that, Pete. Yeah, so if I hit this ball in this direction, not very far, but just with a band wedge here, but as I hit it, that went down near the crocodile, that one. We're, we're up here in Townsville, we've got a, we've got a little saltwater crocodile in the lagoon just behind me here. So, uh, but to, to cause that to happen, that's what uh, the mechanics of our program really train you to do. So that when you hit the golf ball, the golf swing has a, a swinging motion. And when you hit on the right path, there's, you get the forward lean. So. You won't see the forward lean from this side, but this shows you the path. The path of the golf swing, it's not a straight back and straight through path like a lot of cricketers think it is. Uh, and, and people that think golf logically would go down the line. The club travels on this inclined wheel, so it swings back. You don't want to swing it in here. If you do it with the correct uh, hand and hip connection, the, the club travels effortlessly on the right path to start. And then on the downswing, this club is designed to want to want to swing that way. So it's crazy, but if you, if you, the golf is a two-target two-target game, the ball went down that way. But my attention and intention was to throw the club head down and out into the golf ball. So uh, if you have that concept that. The golf ball is your target, so you throw the club head at the ball and you allow the, the correct releasing of the club face to hit the ball to the target. Uh, you, you're on a lot better track uh, to have a good mental game, aren't you? I'll get back to Chris. He's up there and- Absolutely, Pete. Up here, uh, just near Fraser Island, on um, 
yeah, just having a little break and come back uh, today. Um, anyway, so um, we might uh, finish up there. I hope everyone got something um, out of today. Um, so I guess the conclusion is, it, yes, it's both. It's, it's a mental, it's a physical. It's also probably a spiritual game to some degree as well. Um, but um, golf is definitely a physical and a mental uh, game and both work hand in hand. You've got to improve your mental skills. You've got to improve your physical skills and both help each other. Um, it's not just, it's just not all mental. You know, some, some mental gurus, they say that, oh, golf is all mental. Well, I can tell you, if, if you can't hit a chip shot, it's, you know, it becomes really mental then. Okay. Exactly. Um, all right, so yeah, if if uh, if you want to know further about our program, um, just have a look at our um, Breaking 80 program, and then you'll see the the layout on on what we have planned for people, which is to take you from uh, where you are to Breaking 80 on a regular basis, and for some it might even be Breaking 75 or uh, or 70. Um, so thanks, folks, for listening, and look forward to seeing you um, in the next um, little little. Um, video we're going to put together a replay will be sent out to you um early next week all right okay. thanks peter okay. thank you chris and let's uh, hopefully we've got a lot of people coming and joining us on the breaking 80 program because that really is a way to balance the physical with the mental and enjoy the hit for a lifetime all right we'll send you more information uh together with the um with the video replay all right thanks folks see ya thanks chris Thank you, everybody.